Well, hello everyone. So it's been a while since I've uh, done a proper devlog for Rogue of Valis, and one of the reasons for that is just I've been busy. Uh, it's just you know one of those things that the more you have to do, the less time you have to talk about what you're doing, and of course, you know, vice versa. Uh, I'm still pretty busy actually, but I felt like I had something worth saying, so. I wanted to talk about finding the fun in level design again, and if any of you all have been following you know, the very first devlog I, I put together, this was a topic I brought up. Um, I think what would be a perfect backdrop would be to play through the last level I completed. So this is, I'm currently redoing the first six levels I made, uh, working toward a playable demo. And I want these six levels in here because this set ends on a pretty nice cliffhanger. In fact, it's the end of this level, once you beat this boss, that presents the cliffhanger. And I thought, you know, this would be a good, good time to put out a demo and maybe get some feedback. And, well, redoing these levels has been, been a challenge. Let's look, see what's behind this curtain here. So, I talked about level design in my very first devlog, and it's always been a little frustrating just you know how hard it's been and I don't mean you know like there's definitely an art and I would almost say a science to effective level design I don't mean difficulty there what I was constantly running into is what would be best described as writer's block and <laughs> why that's so frustrating is because you know I'm kind of living a childhood fantasy of mine me and my brother we were growing up we grew up on you know Nastas share our games and we, we'd always spend a long time talking about you know what kind of games we could make if you know only we had the programming know-how to make them uh, of course we didn't uh, but that's a that's a story for a different time second let me get through this guy oh that was a mess and now I got two of them Ooh, there we go it's like I have to concentrate through this part as I mentioned, my very first devlog, and you know, trying to play this and talk at the same time is tough. I swear the levels are not this hard, but it definitely it takes some concentration. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that switch. I'm gonna, I want to talk about these switches and actually the backgrounds and everything you're seeing. So, like I've been saying, I've been having a little bit of writer's block with level design. It has been frustrating because, like I said, my brother and I, we spent a long time... You know, fantasizing about the kinds of games we could make if you know, only we had the ability to make them. Uh, what we would do is take that old tractor feed style printer paper and draw, well, you can see the score went up there, I got one of them, and we draw vampire levels. Uh, vampire, not a lot of people are, I would imagine are familiar with that game. Vampire Talisman of Invocation was an old Ultima style DOS game and run away from him. Oh, that's an app. Okay. <laughs> There's definitely some bugs I need to iron out here. Got yeah, flying apps. But no one said that the first draft of being a game is perfect. But yeah, we take that old tractor style paper and we draw vampire levels. And we also did Mario levels. And we filled up a whole ream of that paper with different levels. Now, these levels were not good by any sense of imagination. I'm sure that if I were to actually program them, they would be really bad. But the thing, ooh, the thing is, uh, I was just gonna run in here. The thing is that, you know, as I entered my adult years, you know, I learned more about level design and just the mechanics, and it's kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time. Because once you know how things are supposed to happen, it kind of limits your imagination. And you know, I'm reminded of a conversation I had with my nephew you know, a few years ago when I was working on another game and I told him about it. And, you know, he kept giving me ideas like, oh, could you do this, this, and this, and this? And I just had to think, well, you know, I could do this, but it'd be really hard to program, or I could do this, but I have to draw, you know, 20 frames of animation. And, you know, once you know you know, technical limits of things, it, it becomes very, it becomes a limitation. So you kind of have to un, unlearn that. And I guess that would be, if I had any practical advice, I guess it's not really practical advice, but something I've learned 
and you kind of have to learn to think like a kid again. What kind of helped me get into this mindset was actually a conversation I had with my wife a few months ago. I uh, was showing her some of the some of the things I've been doing, and you know, I have these little pipes and everything just kind of scattered in the background. And she looked at one of those and asked me, well, "What does this do?" And you know, I was about to say, "Well, it's, you know, it's just background art; it doesn't really do anything." But then I realized, "Well, how how would you know nine-year-old me think?" Well, nine-year-old me, oops, well, <laughs> nine-year-old me um, got distracted here trying to survive. We'll give this another try. Uh, nine-year-old me would, you know, come up with a whole, a whole little backstory about what everything does. Like, well, this pipe goes here and it runs this machine. Of course, the player would actually never know any of this, but it's, it still exists. And this is a concept that you see in novel writing as well. In fact, really any fiction, you have a backstory. And there's the part of the story that the reader or audience, whoever it is, doesn't know, but is there because it drives the part of the story that the audience does interact with. In this case, uh, Roga Vallis is a story about Marika. Uh, she is a citizen of the Lurican city-state. And Lurica, which uh, I'll get that get to that in a moment here, is being assimilated by the Valen Empire. And, well, first of all, you know, I think it'd be a little too cliche to have a, a good force and a bad force. In reality, there's everything's mixed. So, in a little bit of a twist, the Valen, the people of the Valen Empire are generally pretty, pretty good people. Um, and for Lyrica, eh, maybe not so much. But the Valen government, now they're, they, they have some ulterior motives. And that's really where the story of this game opens up. Marika is being chased by this sphere uh, called a Sentry Sphere. And no one else really believes her because it's you know, weird, right? Now this this game world does not have electricity, so nothing like you know like flying objects would be imaginable by anybody. But in this level, we find out that this device is real, and then Marika has proof. Now what she's looking for is really just validation because she's. If you look at her uh, reputation, um, it starts off joke of Lorica, so she's not taken very seriously at all. And she she's just kind of lost anyway. You know, she's 29. Um, in this world, when people get to age 25, they're supposed to know what they want to do with their lives. She doesn't, so she's four years late, and she's kind of kind of you know maneuver. Uh, wandering around and you know her backstory I would be a topic for another time but uh, the Valen Empire they do have some ulterior ulterior motives to take over this city-state which yeah uh, the naming is completely accidental uh, I accidentally and this is a good accident so I want to keep this gave all the women at least in the city-state names that end with K-A and all the men uh, D-A, except for one, uh, Marika's brother's Keita, with a T-A. And what I decided to do is, well, we'll just give this, this civilization three genders. We have men, women, and scholars. Which, that, that's the tragedy of them, is that they've created a system where they effectively remove their best and brightest from the gene pool. Uh, this, anyway, it, it kind of doesn't matter anyway, because the Empire's taking them over. And the city-state has a bad economy, and they're you know, generally struggling, so Valen Empire coming in to take over seems like a good thing, right? Well, like I said, the, the government has some ulterior motives, and it, it has to do with what we're about to learn in this level, which is their new technology. Uh, which I've mentioned before, by the way. In fact, it's even in the um, summary of the game. Uh, electricity is what their, what their ulterior motives are. But anyway, get out of here. To go back to level design, you know, I started looking at, you know, what I'm doing in these levels and decided that, you know, there's backstory I can tell with these. And this is the lab. So Marika is infiltrating a lab. Now I'm gonna need to concentrate for this next part, because you see that um that thing? That is a light. 
and it is attached to, I'm finally going to die if I do this, but I'll go in here a little bit, it's attached to those alarms. And what those alarms are, are those uh, turrets, it's attached to the alarm in the turrets. Uh, the <laughs> anyway, I never promised a good playthrough of this level here. Um, in fact, I need axes. So, one of the gimmicks in the game is the player has to learn how these different systems work, and they start off very simple. Uh, just, you know, alarms and alarms and triggers, but they get increasingly complex. There we go. So, you see the little red dot? Uh, there's three turrets. Underneath the middle one's a red dot. Uh, that's kind of an eye, so to speak. And if that thing can see the player, then it will communicate with the turrets and they will aim and fire. And this room is especially deadly because you, you can't just run through it. So as the game progresses, these systems get increasingly complex and the, one of the goals that the player has is to figure out how they work and how to defeat them. In this particular level, you can't just run through this room because there's a, a gate on the other side and one of those switches opens the gate. Well, if you take the time to push one of those switches, you're just going to get annihilated by those turrets. So, There's generally three ways to defeat these systems. Uh, one way is to destroy the eye. Now the eyes have a lot of hit points and since these special weapons are kind of a valuable resource, then you generally don't want to waste a whole bunch of them taking out these eyes. Uh, another thing you can do is take out the lights, because if it's too dark for the eye to see you, then it's not going to trigger. That works in the previous level, but these lamps have a stronger shell, and they'll absorb more hits. Now, the other thing we can do is, in this level, and pause here, we can disable the system. Okay, I need to kill that guy first. There we go. So when we disable the system, you know, we have 22 seconds. Oh no, we have 10 seconds. Now, I'm going to need to concentrate for this next part. So I'm going to go for this here. So, at the end of this corridor, there is a book. Which, that's the other gimmick of the game here, is you gain skills by reading books. And you see how we have... Um, let me open up one of these, 22,845 experience points to spend. So there are two skills that are kind of game changers in the early game. Vitality, which we have that book but can't read it yet. And the other one is Sanctuary. Uh, Vitality is the one I really want, because that's going to add a bunch of hit points to Marika. Like right now she only has 20, which is pretty low for the boss. Uh, she's only going to be able to take two hits from the boss with that, with that level. Um, getting the Vitality skill, she'll be able to take at least one more hit, maybe two, if we can get her intelligence up a little bit more. Which, you know, the way you raise your intelligence is by reading more books. So, the more XP you spend, the intelligence scales along with it. Uh, the other book is Sanctuary, and Sanctuary will let you, instead of dying, if you get get hit too many times, you drop to zero hit points, and then you can take one more hit. Uh, that effectively prevents any enemy from one-shotting Marika, although she will take uh, environmental damage. So if she falls too far or something like that, that'll, that'll be an insta-kill. But from any enemy attacks, it prevents them from doing instant damage, so... You know, if you play all your cards right, you can go into this boss fight being able to take five hits. I don't think I'm able to do that, uh, but at least one more. So right now I can only take two. That's that's pretty bad. This is also the point of the game where you have to be a little bit more strategic about how you spend your XP because in the early game you can just read everything you you want and you have enough experience points to cover the the cost of all those books. Uh, now we're going to have to be a little bit more strategic. So what's going to help us most with the boss? Well, if I run through this next part really fast, I get a pretty significant XP bonus. 
which will go a long way to you know being able to read all the books I need to get through the boss. So I'm going to try to do this. I got 22 seconds to get to the other end of the corridor. And if I can do it in that time, there's a nice XP bonus. So we'll try. And I messed up already because I forgot. <laughs> Jeez. Well, that's, that's what happens with the turrets. Forgot to turn the alarm off. All right. Giving this another go. See, that's the problem. We try to talk. See, I really need endurance too. Uh, the movement points in the um, on the upper left. There's a lightning bolt. I I posted on Reddit a few weeks ago, and someone commented on that. Like, it's gonna be really annoying if you fall off of if you can't climb ledges or anything if you run out of movement points. And I, I agree. Uh, the, the movement points really affect the strength of certain skills and also bonuses okay so now I gotta get him uh, I think I'm not gonna really do this yeah this is not looking good oh so I really should have come into this level with another axe okay, I'll give it one more try one more I'll let it wrestle it. So if I could read the endurance, I could get oops. I can get more um, movement points. It'd be a little bit easier to get through that particular area. He takes exactly one hit. But since I don't have that skill, I can't do that. I'm trying to conserve my experience points here. Get a knife ready. That's the door. There's the gate. Somehow I got that back. Okay. Take that out. Yeah, see, it'd be really helpful if I could take. Oh! Another. I had an axe. But I might have to. <laughs> I'm gonna try it again. I might have to. I don't wanna restart. Because I need that book. I need. I need. I need vitality. Oh, there. Yeah, see how America just kind of kicks very weakly? Well, that's because she was low on movement points. Okay, snipe that guy. Okay, points went up. Yeah, see, alarm comes back on. seems oh 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 no 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 oh those things are ruthless see I've died six times I keep trying to do this so one thing I'm going to mention before anyone gets it because this doesn't look good when the developer is having this much trouble with the game well I haven't cheated but I've done some things out of order I mean, for one thing, as I mentioned before, this is the second boss level, not the first one. So I actually should have more experience points by the time I get here. Uh, also, see how we have all these gold coins? Well, there's nothing to spend them on. So what, what you'll be able to spend the gold on is to make the uh, pickups better. So right now, if you find an axe or a knife pickup, it only gives you four of each weapon. But... If you spend the gold, you get an extra pickup. So that'll make it a little bit easier to get to this stage with... There, okay, go, 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 go. I don't care. Die. Door! <laughs> just made it. Look at all that. See, that's, that's how it's supposed to be done. If I only had done it on the first try... Be a lot more impressive, but hey, uh, six times a charm. Yeah, we have no weapons left either. <laughs> yeah, it should be a little bit easier than it's looking here, because uh, you know, by the time you get to this level, you'll be able to get the power ups up to about six, and the hearts will actually give you more hit points as well. Here, go away. So I think we have enough. 
Yeah, so there's Vitality, there's Sanctuary. So here's where this gets a little bit strategic. I think having Vitality, so either one of these will get me one more hit with the boss. So I think Vitality may be the better way to go. So we'll go for that one. Um, gain six hit points, and uh, just six hit points by itself will let Marika take an extra hit from the boss. By the boss, uh, each time it hits you, it takes off 12 hit points. So 25 is the magic number, because then you can take three hits, or 37. Uh, I have a save game that has 37 is the absolute max you can have. If you've read all the books and pretty much played all the levels perfectly, um, I'm not going to be able to get that high, especially because I don't even have the other level to, to gain XP from yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm 36. Now I forgot what the scaling was. How much XP do I need to spend to get the next point of intelligence? See, I, I, I think it doubles. I don't want to say it's 128,000. That seems like a lot. Maybe it is. So, by, I'll add some more windows to let the player know so they don't have to guess. Because that would be useful to know. But, 2,000 to spend. So we're not learning anything else. Okay, well, let's move on to the second half of the level. So there is a save statue down here. So as I was saying, the uh, original topic was finding the fun level design. So yeah, that's something, especially in this level, you see all these little red things? So this is the sort of thing that started to get me interested in level design again. It's just, I've read this so many times, you know, you can, you know, you can tell a story through level design, but it's one thing to read the advice, and it's another thing to know how to take it. And in this case, I just started having fun drawing these things and just let my imagination run wild. Like, you know, this is not just background art here. This, these are valid experiments is what we're looking at here. And I actually did some things I'm quite proud of. Uh, first of all, there's a secret level. Or, nah, not secret level, secret room. Get some more goodies. More gold we can't spend. Well, I'm actually, I'm going to go save my game again. Now, you can reuse those as many times as you want. Oh, I only have one knife. Okay. Yeah, this is not. There we go. Ah, see, I didn't. I didn't get that fast enough. So if you get those quickly enough, you get a cool bonus, and that raises your level, your um, rogue rating level. Here's another Valen experiment. Yeah, go down the pit. So you know, these were fun to make. I kind of feel like I should make like a pipe dream clone game or something, have a mini game just to... Because all the old shareware games, like the Abogee games, they'd say, you know, it comes with a free game if you register. So I can go to get players that cross over here. Yeah, like, see, here's something you can play with. You hear how that sounds different? It'll, it'll turn off eventually. Yeah, these don't do anything at all other than just add immersion. But that's the fun part. I wasted more time than I feel like I should admit putting these things in the game. Like these. Of course, I accidentally, somehow I put a bug in here where these only work once. Oh, see, now Marika's in the light so they can see her. And we'll get out of here. Like, see, they don't work again. I can kind of see on this one. Underneath her feet. Ooh. There's a little sliver of red there. I don't know what's wrong with that, but, you know, hey, it's a failed experiment. It's not a bug, it's a feature. Oh! That's what I get for being cocky. See, I want to get that bonus. The uh, name of the game is to get the best rogue rating you can get. Oh, that's not good. There, off the stairs. Let's see if I can kick him down the thing. Nope. Boop. Okay. <laughs> I don't need this. I don't need to talk about this this time. I'm gonna try this one more time. There we go. So I know that's possible. Is he dead? Yeah. Okay. There's one more, but I need. See, this is why I need that endurance skill. Okay, we're almost to the end here. 
So we're getting close to the boss fight. This is the big reveal. So going back to my original topic, so, you know, you know I have any practical advice to make level design fun again. Oh, that gold coin. And that is just, you know, just remember your inner child. That's, that's what I would summarize it as. Remember your inner child. You know, where you get lost in, you know, what could this be? You know, what could this be? And, you know, that's a good way to create backstory as well, because there's, there is a logic to these pipes here. It's like I mentioned before, in the Valen world, there's no electricity, so everything is steam and gas powered. So all these pipes, you know, they'll tell you what connects to what else. But, what is wrong for? And they're also about to rediscover electricity. And that's where these little red things are. Alright, it's me about to lead up to the boss here. Now, I had a failed recording where uh, I died to this boss an embarrassing number of times. Uh, like I said, it won't actually be this hard in the actual game because, you know, there'll be some additional power-ups that the player will have, but I what we're going to go for it anyway. This is my favorite boss of the two. Let's see, can I read any more of these skills? See, I can't get Sanctuary. That'd, that'd be another hit. Oh, four wisdom. Oh, yeah, the way you gain wisdom is you actually complete bosses. So, Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to read Sanctuary anyway, because uh, you know, every time you beat a boss, you get a cutscene that reveals a little bit more of the story, and with that comes wisdom. With experience comes wisdom. So, um, Practically, that serves as sort of a way to gate off the more advanced skills, which is not done to limit the player more than it's done to force the player to read the lower level books that are required to beat a level. Like one level you'll need the climb skill. And if you don't have the climb skill, you flat out can't even begin the level very much. So what do I do if a player has no experience points to spend and has not learned the climb skill? Well, I just need to make sure that can't happen. So uh, wisdom is one way to sort of gate off the skills, which then forces the player to read you know the ones they need. So yeah, that's not limit. That's that's a careful way to you know enforce a hierarchy of skills. Aiming would be useful. See, the thing with aiming is it lets you aim axes and knives while Marika is running, which would be extremely useful for this boss. You see, twenty five thousand experience points It'd really help if I had another level. Because aiming wouldn't be useful for the other boss. It's really useful for this one. Because it's a big floating turret. You know, you, ha you have to keep moving. Yeah, I, think, I think I'm remembering now why I had such a hard time with this guy. See, I, I read a while ago that one of the practical purposes of bosses to begin with is to kind of force the player to have achieved certain things before they move on to the next stage of the game. Because otherwise, they'll just find it too hard. Not quite playing this right, but we'll go for it. It's got 12 axes, got five knives. That should be enough. To, well, I know it's enough to beat the boss, because otherwise it'd be impossible. Here we go. Sentry Sphere. America can take. Oh, that's not good. She stubbed her toes, and that took off 12 hit points. If you ever stubbed your toe on something before, you know that really hurts. Duck. See, this would be a lot easier if she could move. While she's aiming. Now the pattern to this boss is it does you know, a, a few you know, targeted shots. Ooh, that was bad. And then... Yeah, when you get hit in the shins, you die. <laughs> Remember what that's like. No, well, not dying. Obviously, I'm here. But it feels like death. I get kicked in the shins. Okay, try this. Try number two. You over here this time. But yeah, it has, a, it has a predictable pattern. It'll aim at you for a little bit. Then it goes into this mode where it just fires in a big circle. The, ah, the trick. Ah. Ah. Jeez. 
Do I have this? See, there's another skill that prevents you from getting stun locked like that. I don't think I have it. In fact, it may be. No, it's not endurance. And uh, it's in the other. It's in the incomplete level. I so said there's a skill that will prevent that from happening. So yeah, this is way harder than it really should be. I'm playing these levels out of order, so. And I should stop talking and concentrate. Run! Duck. Okay. It's in spinny mode. You know, when it goes in spinny mode, that's your, your best opportunity to shoot it. One jinx it. This is this is going okay right now. Oh. You don't lose axis. Ooh. If if they miss. Over, under. Ah. background music on this. Uh, dodge that one. Yeah, I, um, I'm not a musician. I uh, licensed all the music. Um, which is like, like I said, I would really like to commission some more of those in the 80s sounding tracks. So I have some that has a kind of 80s synth waves. Oh, am I out of access? I'm out of access. Pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, it's just enough noise. But yeah, I would like to be able to commission the musician. Hey, look at that! The musician that did the, the, the current background tracks. And really, her um, her fees aren't terribly high. It's just it costs money that I don't have right now. There we go. So I finally did it. Um, so yeah, the style bonuses here. So we'll, we'll go through these real quick. Let you know what they are. Because... I, these have been around since the very beginning of the game. Um, gym, there are a couple that scrolled by. Um, one tells you how many cool bonuses you got. And then there's cool as ice, which you get if you get all of them. I, that didn't happen, so you don't see that one. Gym collector is uh, one, a few points for every gym you collect. That's why I call those little orb things. I probably should call them something else because they're not physical objects. I just call them gym. Uh, truly outrageous is if you get all of them. So I got all 53. Uh, gold digger, you get 50 points for each gold coin. And prospector, because you got all of them. Um, librarian uh, is for each book. And Dewey Decimals means we got all of them. <laughs> That's one of my wife's little uh, phrases she likes to say. So I put that in there for her. Uh, Queen of Hearts is if you get all the hearts. Uh, Hardy is, I think it's like spare hit points. That you get from the hearts. Insurable means so every level has a certain number of hit points and healing items. If you use up less than half of them, then you get insurable. It's actually one of the easier bonuses to get. Uh, excellent sniping, that doesn't really add much. And to be honest, I only put that in there for the pun. <laughs> 60 points isn't going to get you very far at all. And we beat our first boss. So, Boss Blaster. Yeah, the. Um, the secret's been revealed, so Marika is now, you know, validated. You know, the the uh, Century Sphere is a real thing, which brings us to our first cutscene. Ah, <laughs> uh, these get degrees. So yeah, these uh, these ranks. Uh, I've told this story before. I used to run a mud server. And the way I, you know, kind of, you know, made experience points a little bit more part of the game is there was an academy that was in charge of, you know, warding XP for doing different things. And then if you completed a whole area or completed a quest or something, you'd get a little grade from the academy. And I had, you know, just played, you know, well, Devil May Cry and they had the, you know, a, A, D, A, B, C, D, and then S rank. So I think that's actually a, a pretty common ranking system. And then some things have triple S's and all these other ranks. Uh, I think uh, Dance Dance Revolution also had them. D is pretty bad, but it's not the worst one, actually. E for effort is the worst one that you can get. Uh, there is an S, 
And there's also a P. If you get a perfect row grading of 800, you get a rank P, which I think is, I forgot what it was. It's an M something, Marader, Marader. Anyway, what happens after Marika finds the Century Sphere? Let's find out. On the final strike, one panel of the Century Sphere breaks off. The sphere hovers in silence for a moment as if in disbelief about its fate. With a metallic screech, purple flames flicker from the seams. Escaping gas begins to tear apart the remaining panels. I kind of assumed that the player would use an axe for the last strike and not a knife, but there we go. Now, I'm not going to change my art. So it, it, it's an axe. I'm also not going to change the background. So that is the old background. Uh, the new one does not have girders. It has those electric pipe things in it. But I guess the player never sees what's behind Marika. They only see what's in front of her. So we'll just pretend that the uh, walls behind her are the bricks and girders. The knot in Marika's stomach gives way to a newfound confidence as she watches the sphere crash into the wall. With a smirk, she steps aside, leaving the ruins of the experimental chamber smoldering behind her. One last thought crosses her mind. Did the Valen engineers make more? Spoiler alert, yes they did. <laughs> and that is the cliffhangers. Not the best of the two cliffhangers, but it's the one that I want to end the demo with. Assuming the player finishes this level last. And again, uh, they're not required to. Uh, the way it works is uh, the game becomes increasingly non-linear as, as the player progresses. So. At this stage, um, I just have to write the story so that if the player does this level first and the other one next, it still makes sense. And I think it will. See, I, I kind of like the graphic novel style art I did with this because I've been struggling for a while with a, it. It's hard to make art in, in this pixel resolution. And this is 432 by 240, so it's a little... Um, a little hard sometimes to draw details, but I think her face, I think that came out well enough. She looks kind of kind of smirky. The original one, I'm going to maybe put in the manual or something like that, where they have the full resolution. Yeah, drawing faces is hard. But there we go. That is the end of new technology, and we have a nice shiny D to show for our efforts. And... Still not enough points to learn Sanctuary, but whatever. We don't need it now. So I think that's it for now. So yeah, um, if you've been following me all this time, uh, thank you for watching. I'm hoping in the next update I can talk a little bit about level six or level three is the um, intended order. Or not level six, level five. Yeah, the way it goes is you have, you have to go back and forth. Do this level one, then this level one, then either level two, then either level three. So the boss level could be as early as level four, but that would probably not be a good idea. It's actually one thing I'm quite pleased with is the sense of progression seems to be working. To be honest, I feel like a little bit of that is luck, but hey, you know the result is the same either way, so I'm going to run with it. But yeah. Um, Brief conclusion to my opening, finding the fun level design. Think like a kid. <laughs> That's really the best way to summarize it. You know, learn to listen to your inner child and kind of get lost in the in the backstory once it clicks. I think that's what helped me get through the writer's block or level designer's block. Yeah, uh, next update, maybe have another level to show and maybe I can share a little bit about the Valen backstory because Marika has more to her backstory than is currently visible right now, but that is a topic for another time. So have a good one, everyone.